Hello and welcome to the Planet Creative Studios YouTube channel. My name is Estella Banks and I'm your artist today for this demonstration. So today I would like to show you how to use a new stencil that I designed and is now available for sale through Planet, sorry, through PM Artist Studio. So you could see here the name of the company. This is the name of the stencil, Tangled Hearts, the size, and then a picture of what the stencil looks like. So I'll be working with the 5x7 version today. So let's get started. In, uh, in this demonstration, I want to show you how to create a black background, or I'm sorry, a black border for the stencil. And so I'm going to start with, uh, using some, this is a, you know, high, uh, what do you call it? Heavy body, <laughs> heavy body black, Mars black from Sennelier. And I'm going to use, this is a soft rubber brayer from, I think it's Speedball. So first I'm going to spread the ink out over the entire gel plate. What you see down here underneath where I'm working is a gel plate. This is a 5x7. I believe this is available through Gel Press and possibly Jelly Arts. So you see, the first thing I did is I laid down a layer of black um, paint. And I am using black acrylic paint. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the black from the apertures because I want to leave only the black back um, outline. Okay. So here I have a piece of this is tracing paper. This is actually dressmakers tracing paper. I, I got it on a roll, but I love the way it works for um, working with stencil. So I could totally use this piece of paper for a collage or some other art part, you know, in a journal or whatever. So then what you're going to see is if, as I pull away the stencil, it leaves the black border outline. So I'm going to take this. It still has some ink on it. I'm going to take it and I have a, a little piece of paper over here to the side. And I'm taking off the, the paint because I don't want to leave the sticky with paint. You could tell it was a brand new stencil, huh? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give this just a moment to dry. And then I'm going to come back with some colors. So hold tight. So here we are. I just want to show you real quick. I was using my handy dandy fan to help the paint dry. And the reason for that is I'm about to apply some other colors. Now you'll notice this brayer is completely black. The paint is dry, but I'm going to switch to another brayer just in case uh, the black wants to come along. Uh, so what I'm planning to do here is a, it would be considered a um, ombre. I have words. Words are hard. <laughs> I can speak. So I'm going to start with a, a pink. This is called uh, quinacridone pink. And I'm going to add some quinacridone magenta here in the middle. So I don't need to do a lot because this is a small plate and also I want to do three colors. And then the last color I'm going to do, I think I want to do, where's my purple? Oh yeah. Here's a deep violet. Uh, here, I want this one. This is deoxazine purple. I'm going to put just a little, oh. <laughs> and this, my friends, is why I have my palette knife ready. I'm going to pick up some of this paint and transport it to an area that I have over here on the side, because this is way too much paint, <laughs> too fun. All right, 
So now let's get started with the brayering. So I'm going to start with brayering the pink at the top and then I'll slowly work my way down. I do want it to blend a little bit, but I still want to see the distinction between the colors. Okay. So I know if I, oh, isn't that pretty? Lovely. I'm going to use my spare paper. We call this a brayer roll-off sheet so that I can save and enjoy that color in the future because I can use this sheet for something else. Everything is recyclable, right? Okay. So next I'm going to pick it up with a sheet of, um, this is a, Paycon, it's, it's a Paycon printmaker's paper. I only need to use half of it because this is a small paper, I mean a small um, gel plate. So then I lay down my paper. You see I'm only using up this part of it. And I chose to use the 5x7 because I feel like this would be good for a card. And if you ever want to be able to see and have a sneak peek of what's going on with your print, I recommend using either a glass or an acrylic plate that you have maybe something that came from a, um, a photo or something like that. You can find acrylic plates even online. I got mine. This one is from a photo frame, but I got some acrylic plates also from um, Amazon. So what I'm doing is I'm massaging a little bit. I mean, I don't want to be sound weird or anything, but I am uh, running my hand over the plate and ensuring that the paint is dry as long as this paper is cool to the touch, then the print is still too wet. And I can, I can always take a peek here and see what's going on. And that might be happening up here in the top corner because I didn't have enough paint and it, the paint was starting to dry before I put the paper down. But that's okay. We'll just do another one. Um, all right. Well, let's, oh, see, look at that. There was a lot of paint on the bottom, as you noticed. But how interesting that the print came out, right? So it wasn't exactly the result I was looking for, but that's okay. That's part of the process. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the rest of this here. And we learn a little bit along the way, right? So let's see here. Hopefully I got the rest of the... I did, but it's still a little bit wet. So I just keep massaging it. Depends on what you're doing. You can massage it with your hand or there's um, there are brayers available from Speedball. And there's, oh, there's a guy that we know. I say we in the art group that I'm in called Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. So his name is Anthony Cody and he also has a channel. Sorry, a, not a channel, but a Etsy shop. And he makes the most amazing wood barons. One day I'm going to get one. So here you could see this could have been here, but it didn't work out that way, but that's okay. We're going to start fresh with another set of colors or the same set in another attempt. So I'm using a baby wipe to clean this off. I want to get it as clean as I can because I will be working with the pink again. So I think I have a pretty good clean, but just in case, let's do one more swipe through. One of the fun side effects of gel plate printing is painty fingers, right? Okay, let's see here. So I think, yeah, it's almost dry. All right, so let's start again with the black because I really like the um, the black outline. I think it's cool. I can also do it on just plain white paper and I see the opportunity to doodle inside here too and uh, apply paint with the sponge. So let's try one more time with the black. Okay, I have my black brayer. Put the brayer with the black paint on it. Okay, now if you can see how much it's glistening, that's an indication that there's too much paint. So I'm brayering off. I'm using the brayer to remove some paint because it doesn't need to be that much. Okay, that's a good amount. So 
So my stencil comes back. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna get some tissue paper. You can also use rice paper. Rice paper is great to pick up the, the still very wet ink from your plate. So here, because I am, my goal is to remove the wet paint so I can remove this pretty quickly. Okay, so I have another awesome print that I can use for um, collage. And then, so I'm gonna use this brayer off sheet to re take this off and remove and share the love of the paint onto the brayer off. And then you're gonna get to see what I mean by, there's so many different ways that you can use the brayer off. Because once I get, oh, nothing, <laughs> nothing, um, not too much transferred over, but the point is also to get this dry because I don't want it to stick. All right, so let's do one more pass with the pink. I think I'm going to go with the lighter purple this time because I noticed how dark the the dioxazine purple was and so it obscured some of the black. We don't want to do that. We want the black, I mean the black to show through because that's part of having the outline. So I'm going to go with, this is called Violet, Light Violet, also Sennelier. And by the way, there's so many different um, paints that you could use. Uh, there's, there's no... Uh, rule that says you have to use a particular paint. This is a, a heavy body paint, which means a sticker. You can see it just blops on. Um, but there's other paint viscosities and I'll show you that in another video comparing the different paint viscosity. Well, look at that. What a surprise, too much paint. So I'll take up some of that and I will be able to use that for something else. I think I'm gonna take up just a look at my purple got in there. Key. <laughs> All right. So let's go back with the lighter brayer. And I'm gonna start applying this paint, brayering it on. I can see this paint is a little bit on the dry side, so I'm gonna have to take that into consideration uh, as I use it for other projects. So let's see how that works out. I might have uh, blended too much. You know what I mean? Jelly bean. Okay, so let's take this Pecan paper. It has a rough and a smooth side. I'm putting the smooth side down. And here I go with my action. I can use the brayer to do the same thing. The first thing that I've learned is to get the corners right away, especially if the paint seems a little drier like this one. And the, the pink paint was a little on the drier side. So you get the corners first. Make sure that you have good adhesion there. And the paint always dries from the outside to the middle. So this is going to be um, cool for a little bit. But it's, you know, a minute or two you give it uh, to do its work. And we can always take a sneak peek at what our print's going to look like through the magic of television. No, just kidding. <laughs> but here you can see the... I have a decent ombre at the top and here is more splotchy, but hey, that adds to the fun, right? Because then I can use this uh, and doodle on it. So that would make it really pretty. And I was thinking about using this as a background for a card. Uh, so a Valentine's card. And I can also see where it would be really pretty to use purple, the, the dark purple, the oxazine purple instead of the black to get the... A similar effect. Oh, now look at this. Dun, da, da, da. This is one of the fun parts of doing gel plate printing. Uh oh, it's a little wet over here. Is the big reveal. And so here we are. Let's see, I think this probably is still just a little bit too wet, but let's see here. I already got started. But look how pretty. There are going to be times when paint gets left behind. If you can wait it out, that's the best, so that you get the best outcome. This case, it's not that there's paint 
that's being uh, removed from my paper. It's more that there was an excess of paint on the plate, right? And so here you can see that some of my image didn't transfer. Some, some of the outline of the stencil didn't transfer because it's still here on the plate. It was left behind too much paint or too much, uh, not enough patience. <laughs> so I'm going to try one more time. Isn't that pretty? This part I could totally use on a card, so it's still going to work. And this can create a really interesting background or collage part for your your art journal. So this time I'm going to use the dioxazine purple as my outline color. And then I think I'm going to stick with the pink and the light purple for now. I do think I need to add something though to the pink in order to help it along. Maybe I just need to massage it a bit because the part that's coming out of the nozzle is a little on the dry side. What do you think? Okay, so here I have some paint and I can use this paint that I have over here to the side, sort of like on a palette. I'm going to use my dark brayer. This is probably too much paint take off a little bit. It's not that much. All right, this is a nice paint viscosity. And here you can see this, this is a appearing or behaving in a transparent fashion, but it's not quite a transparent paint. And how do you know if it's a transparent paint? Well, the paint tube will tell you. And in this case, let's see, this is deep violet. I use a different color of violet. Where did I put it? That's so funny. But anyhow, any paint tube that you see will give you some type of indication. Like here, this says it's an opaque color. This is a deep violet. It's different than the purple that I put here. I think that was this one. This, yeah, dioxazine purple. And this one will tell you here the opacity. This one is semi-opaque. Oh, I'm talking too much. I should be removing this color before it dries, this paint. So I know this is smack in the middle of the paper. Yes, it can be considered a waste, but it's, um, I didn't plan it out. So here we are, but that's okay. Still has a purpose. All right. So you see, I removed a good amount of the paint. Again, another piece that I can use for, uh, for collage. And just so you know, I'm over here to the side attempting to take off some of the paint that's on the stencil and share it with my roll-off paper. And a little bit came off, but not a lot. All right, so now we're going to make sure this brayer, I have removed enough of the paint from the brayer so it doesn't get on anything else. I am going to, <laughs> I'm making myself laugh today. I'm, what is it? The comedy of errors? But hey, it's all good, right? Let's put that aside. Okay, this is going to be really pretty, I can tell already. All right, let's see how dry this is. Now, I didn't mention this before, but I am looking for it to be dry to the touch. I can see here when I look at, this area that it's still a little bit wet so I'm going to use my handy dandy fan to dry it off and through the magic of editing you'll see very shortly that it's dry all right like I said through the magic of editing so I'm going to pick it up so you could see slightly different but it's very much dry to the touch. Okay, back to the pink. Now I will also make a point to, I wanna point out that because this paint is semi-opaque or semi-transparent, that means that the colors I put behind it will be visible through the paint. 
If this paint were completely opaque, then anywhere where the paint was visible, it wouldn't show through if I put another color behind it. So I am going to add the pink again. This pink is an opaque color. So when you're working with paints, you want to keep in mind things like the transparency or, or opacity of the paint, as well as the colors, how they're going to blend together or when you layer them. So I'm working in a similar color palette, so it'll be okay. So here's the purple, the light purple again. So let's see how it comes out. All right, so I see my paint doesn't seem as dry anymore. Maybe I was just working with paint at the tip of the... of the nozzle. Okay. So I'm using my brayer roll-off sheet to remove some of the paint. So you could see here what it's going to look like when it's done. And I'm going to use the other half of this paper because I can. So here I am on the corners quickly. Then I'm just going to give this a few minutes to cure or render as my friend P at PM Artist Studio likes to say, let's let it render. And there's a lot of times when P will let, leave a, um, a print on her plate. And I've done it too. I've left it on overnight. But I'm usually super impatient. So I want to see what it's going to look like really fast. And I, so sometimes I end up with my prints being like this one where it was not on the plate long enough to let it dry. I really like how that came out. I'm going to be able to use this part right here. I think the black might be kind of dark. I would have to add some dots or something. Maybe, you know, do some doodling with white a white pen. will help brighten it up, uh, some outlines and stuff. And I'll show you that later. So let's see here. Yeah, it's still not quite warm enough. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I think we have some some pretty good action going on. Oh, look how pretty. This is one of the fun parts. I think I've said that already, but it really is the gel plate reveal. Boom. So look how that looks. So in order to avoid having as much of the, the original purple here in the middle, I needed to move more quickly when I was removing the, um, the paint from the, bra um, you know, from the stencil and from the plate so I could do that one more time so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's see here. Got plenty of paint over here. It was going all over the place. I think I might have accidentally turned my jeans into my paint pants. <laughs> we'll see if I could get some of the ink, uh, the, the paint out. So I'll do a little bit more but not too much. So funny. I don't know. These are made for people with little fingers, I think. All right. One more time. Let's get this roll in. Okay. Make sure you get your corners well. So your action is like a quick flick of the wrist as you're going. Okay. Okay. One more time. Let's get this on here. And quickly, I'm going to remove some of the paint. This time, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with my paper instead of using the middle of it. Because I can always use this other half for something else. So let's see if we can get some of this paint off. This paint likes to stick, so I'm going to use my finger to see if I can remove more of the paint here by using a little bit more pressure right within the apertures of the stencil. 
Okay, a little bit better. I can always come back with the other side and see if I can get a little bit more off. This is where more judicious use of my paper comes into handy, right? All right, let's see. Oh, yes, there we go. I have some clean apertures, which is beautiful, because then I want to add some paint. So I'm going to start with... Um, this is called light pink. And these two pinks are pretty different in terms of their their tone, their values. I'm going to use them together anyway, just for fun. I think I can also uh, use this purple in between as a divider uh, so that the eye... Because sometimes the colors aren't, aren't super harmonious, even though they're in the same color... You know, vent sort of the same color family. Sometimes they need some space. All right, so let's get this one going here. Okay, now the difference between what I did last time and what I'm doing this time is I left the stencil on here. And that can come in handy as well. If I want to keep the original purple that was there without layering over um, the other color so that there's more color separation. So here I have some of the Pecan paper again. And I'm going to lay it down. Get my Baron going here in the corners. And again, like I shared with you, we can always check out a preview. So these are some very pastelish, pastelly colors looking beautiful together. Now this is still a little bit cold. Quite warm. Let's see what happens when I look at my inky fingers. Am I going to get what I need? Nope, not yet. Feels a little cool. Well, this is a very pretty result, even though there's quite a lot of paint left over on the plate, which I can use for something else. So I could layer it onto another print. It came out pretty. What do you think? All right, one last print for now, and then we'll come back with the doodling. So let's see, I want to do some, what happens if I use magenta for my layer? Mm, there's probably plenty of paint, but You hear me rolling off the paint onto my my brayer off. Okay. So one more tissue paper. It's so important to have all of your supplies right next to you <laughs> as you're doing this process because depending on the color of the paint and even 
the viscosity of the paint. The paint can dry fast, and you you want to be able to get you know get your paint up if that's what you desire to do. You know, get the paint going, get it off. So you could see too how the tissue paper wrinkles, and that adds a new and a nice effect to it as well. So let's see. Do I get it? Do I get enough? Maybe not. Let's see if I can get some more by doing this. Now I don't know if you noticed, but I noticed that my stencil still has a lot of the purple paint on it, and it picked up. So a nice effect. See if I can get more paint out. So I'm gonna do little more intentional rubs with all of my fingers into the areas where the paint is, the apertures. Okay, and then let's do the light pink. Sorry, this is light pink. This is also considered... No, this is quinacridone pink. Um, quinacridone pink with... Ooh, what do you think it's going to look like if I use fluorescent pink? Is that a little bit too much? Maybe. All right, well, let's stick with the pinks for right now. Okay. Okay, again, you'll notice I left the uh, stencil on because I want to have those magenta lines more distinct. With no colors behind. I think that's a lot of pink. Let me get a little bit of that up. Ooh, pretty. Of course, we always just love our own work, right? Okay, so I am down to, well, let's see, this is um, some rice paper. I'm just going to put it down. <laughs> I'm going to put it down. There's actually two sheets here, but I can separate it here. So with rice paper, you want to be mindful uh, that its tensile strength is very on the weaker side, so you don't want to leave it on very long if you can avoid it. You want to pick it up as quickly as possible. And so here we go. And doesn't that remind you of the conversation hearts? That's what I see when I look at that. Let's see if I can pick up some more of this here. Let's see here. Yeah, a little bit. And I can continue to print on this and use it uh, for printing off. But this came out pretty good. You could see that some of the paint got left over here. I'm curious if I can get any of that. Not really, but there's a little open spot here. So there you have it. This is printing on the gel plate with the new Tangle Heart stencil. Coming up next, we'll be using it in a card. Hello again. Here I am with my paper cutter and some cardstock. I am going to cut this in to two parts. So it's, you know, 11 by eight and a half. So here it is now, five and a half by eight and a half. And then next step is to so that it's easy to fold. Voila. Yes. Okay. So now that we've done that, oh, let's go ahead and score the other one while we're at it. Because if you make one, you can make two, right? Let's see, this is my cutting blade, so I don't want to cut it. <laughs> Here's my scoring blade. And then the second card.
All right, I decided I want to try a little die cutting today with some of my gel prints to go in or on the card. So I'm going to be using a die or a thin die that works really well when it's on a magnetic platform. So I'm going to put this one down. And I've chosen a couple of different prints. So this is a print that I did. The full print has other leaves on it, but I really like the veininess. And this is an actual botanical. I took a plant and um, made a print from it on the gel plate. So I'm going to place this here. And then the second cutting pad. Here we go. And you're going to hear it crackle. Don't worry about the crackle usually does that when sometimes it crackles when the paper is really thick so let's make sure we have a good cut because this is a thinner paper oh yeah great see nice okay I think I'll cut one more while I'm here because if you can make one you can make two <laughs> okay so I'm going to use this as a focal point on the card and here. Oops. Okay, I'm going to cut one more, a couple more from another print because it has a similar ombre theme that we used in the gel plate print and the gel print that we did earlier. So here you can see that I just cut it in half, but it has a, a similar color scheme from the prints that we just did. Together. So here I can take advantage of the ombre, both in the dark and the light side. So let's do that. So nice and squeaky, huh? Maybe it needs a little oil. So I don't know if you've ever used one of these before, but this is a big shot. It was um, originally made and manufactured by Sizzix, S-I-Z-Z-I-X. And this one was uh, branded and sold under Stamping Up. Um, and these are some of the Stamping Up. Oh no, I missed. It has a little bite out of it. <laughs> so let's try that one more time. I have to be more mindful of my placement, huh? Let's see, can I get it through here? The good thing about the magnetic plate, too, is that it does stick down to it. That helps a lot with making sure that it doesn't go anywhere. I wasn't paying attention to the placement of my heart before. Boo. That's okay. Anyhow, back to the, the this big shot. So it's a, it's a manual die cutting machine. You've probably seen other versions or name brands similar to this um and then of course there are the magical um electronic die cutting machines like like a silhouette the brother scan and cut and a cameo wait there's another one a cricket the most famous in the window not most famous but a very famous one the cricket that are electronic and they do it all through programming but this is a Full faithful, I guess you could say. All right. So, um, now that you want to take a look at the prints that I've done, you can have a peek at those. So this was the original one, the very, very first one. And then these are some of the different um, variations that have happened through this printing session. This one really reminds me of the Conversation Hearts. I remember this one. Um, oh, I think I already cut it up, but anyhow. Some of the other prints. And then these are the tissues. Black, purple, purple, and another black. So I 
I think I want to use, let's see how, let's audition these on top of here and see how they look. Mm, I think this one, nope, not even that one. Hmm. Okay, not enough contrast about this one. Okay, might be able to make that one work. This one has a decent contrast here, but it's a slightly different color. Maybe that doesn't matter. So this one could work if the print, so this is a good contrast between this and the background. And of course I could do this one. This one though, I feel like it needs some doodling. So maybe I'll pause the video and do some doodling on that one. And then of course there's this one where I have some good contrast. And see how this one has a similar color scheme. I could actually probably just use this section on the card. Or as simple as cutting out part of this, also using the die cut. So that I could just simply put a heart on the card. That would be a very clean and simple card. And I think I had mentioned, originally thought of doing that, and then I forgot as I was cutting them. So let's go ahead and do that. So put the paper down first, and then the die. I'm going to place it so that this heart is inside the heart. That's kind of cute, right? Okay. And maybe you heard a little bit more cracking sound because this is a thicker paper. So here you can see simple heart in a heart, and that, that could be a very simple card. Or I could use one of the backgrounds, like even the background from, from this could be, you know, very simple behind this, this card, just to give it some other color. So we'll play around with those in just a moment. So remember I was talking about doing some doodling on the heart. So here we have an opportunity to outline this particular heart if, since I want to emphasize that. And I'm using, this is a Uniball, Sakura Uniball gel pen. And so I'm outlining this heart here. And I can do it however I want, right? <laughs> so let's go over the darker lines. And then also around the outside. And this is one of the fun things about the stencil is that there's so many possibilities of what you can do with it. I envisioned many different ways to use it like this, doing the doodling and or coloring inside the heart areas because there's so many different um, apertures. And then you can also see that as I embellish this particular heart, it pulls it forward and pushes the other hearts back. And so that gives it some additional dimension, which is kind of fun. And I could come in too with some additional, like a darker pen here to make um, a shadow. And then I can also do um, simple circles or spirals on top here to even pull out, you know, more color or re push, push back the black, right? So that it's less prominent and we have more of the colors on top. These gel pens are so finicky sometimes. So here we go. 
few more circles or spirals. And I can go over these one more time to make them a little bit more prominent. Oh, and I could even take it a step further and put bling bling on these, um, which I may end up doing because that would be fun. Because I love bling. Who loves bling? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. So here I have emphasized this particular heart. I'm also going to go around the edge a little bit on this one because I want to set it apart from the color that's going to be behind it. So something just as simple as running the gel pen along the edge to give it, so, you know, give it a white edge. So that way when I put it up against the color, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here we go. Just some swirls along the way. It also gives it a lacy look. A little bit more around the other edge. What else can I tell you about this stencil and about the hearts? Well, the hearts, of course, uh, no matter what color you use, the the hearts will make a great background, but I really, I don't know why, but I just envisioned using them to, um, to color in because I love coloring. So this is a nice connection between the hearts. And I probably will come back and put some pearls or uh, some diamonds here. I have many, many supplies from my card making days, right? So here it goes. So here you can see now I've given it some separation from its background, um, especially on the darker side here. And this could go like this. There's many ways this, this card could be configured, but I cut it so that I could show off the ombre of this while also showing off the ombre of this, All right? So here we go. Okay. Pull out my handy glue stick. And I can use these papers for something else. So I'll use my background paper. Do my gluing. And this is a simple Yoohoo stick. There's so many different ways you can glue things. This I just like the way this one works. Um, if I'm doing collage though, I most likely will use a medium. Uh, this one is nice because I have a little tiny bit of wiggle room to move it around once I start laying it down. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I'm quick, I can um, adjust slightly. I love this paper. I think this is rice paper and it's it's got a lot of give to it. So here you go. And then where's my heart? Yeah, and then the last piece de la resistance, <laughs> I don't speak French, but sometimes I can pretend, is going to be to stamp the word love down here. So I'll be right back with that stamp. So here I have an acrylic block. This is a Tim Holtz uh, stamp from the set called hashtags <laughs> and this is a memento memento um, tuxedo black ink make sure my fingers are clean before I touch my card and then I can put a simple love right here and voila the card is finished look at me speaking more French 
Thank you for joining me today on this uh, creative adventure with Planet Creative Studios. My name is Estella Banks, and I appreciate that you stopped by.